a 56 years grandfather is marrying a 6 years baby and you are not finding this act evil exclamation mark exclamation mark you are also a hypocrite and demon exclamation mark exclamation mark you don't even have power to call evil what is evil and bad what is bad exclamation mark exclamation mark this is what islam does exclamation mark exclamation mark islam in logic and brain out i'm not sure what that means anyway so this is a comment and I believe you know what this is referring to. To this, my reply was, If you are referring to the marriage of the Prophet with Aisha specifically, can you pinpoint specifically why it is evil? So, that's my question. Because the, the statement is just, A grandfather, a, uh, a, a girl. So, I believe that is referring to this specific marriage of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with Aisha radhiyallahu anhu on her. So I have to clarify that first because if he is talking about some other people, why that meaning that does not relate to me, right? But if you are talking about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then we are talking about a prophet of God in Islam. So that is, you know, something that I'm interested in. All right. So, she was not forced. Her parent was directly involved. Her parent knew the character of the husband-to-be. The marriage was a good marriage from her own ex uh, experience herself. She conveyed lots of stories about the marriage long after the death of her husband and we can see it to be an example to live by. So, this is a fact. Right? It, it, you go, go, can go through the, the primary source itself and you can see this, right? And Aisha herself tells about, you know, uh, his own experience, uh, her own experience. If you see all of this information, mainly from herself as the wife in this specific marriage, which part exactly would see it as evil? So to me, this is a valid question because he claimed, if you see this marriage and you do not call it evil, you are also evil or something. So I say, okay, if we are talking about this specific marriage, we can see that how it comes about involving the parent that protect her, her, her own interest, know the husband to be, the character, etc. Believe that this is going to be a good marriage. And indeed, from her own, you know, story, from her own experience, it is a good marriage. So, where is evil in that? So, my honest question, to which he replied, It was evil because she was not mentally prepared for marriage. Okay, so that's number one. Despite her good experience, despite, she tells, after the, after the marriage, after uh, the husband has died, he sh she tell a good story. Despite that, it's still evil because at the beginning, when she was married, she was not mentally prepared. Okay, that's the claim, right? Doesn't matter whether the, the, the character of the husband is good, doesn't matter the marriage is actually good, she was not mentally prepared, hence it is evil. That's number one. Number two, her consent is most important thing which she couldn't give at the time because of her age. That's number two. Meaning that at the age, she cannot give consent. So, this can lead to a long discussion actually because you are talking about a general civil, you know, liberal perspective of this or you want to talk about objective morality which govern that age of consent should be, should be what because if we want to go on that route you have to define which is the defining source on which we base upon what is you know the age of consent so is it based on the bible etc that can lead to a long discussion but anyway so that's point number two he, uh, he believed that the age was consent, meaning that because 
she was not of age of consent, it is evil. Her parent agreed to marriage, but what about her? Her consent is nothing, and the way later Aisha exposed Muhammad. Okay, so this part first. So okay, her parent, who is a good parent, will uh, doing everything that they want or they they can to protect the the benefit of the daughter, and knowing the potential husband, this surely be a good husband. Okay, yeah, okay, but what about her? She might not want what is good for her, for example, right? Um, so this is reiterating the point of consent, basically, right? And number four, basically, yeah, two and three is the same. Number four, later Aisha exposed Muhammad is the way no other could expose him. I'm not sure what this means. But if you are talking about Aisha actually know how Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is um, under in, in in behind closed door, that is exactly true, and that from there is where we get all the story of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam behind closed door, and we can see how good and exemplary example that is, right? He is not only good in front of public eyes, he also is good, you know, behind closed door. I believe Aisha herself is saying when people ask, what is the akhlaq, what is the behavior, the ethics, uh, the character of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam? And he say, khulukul Qur'an, right? Meaning, what you see in the Qur'an, all the good things in the Qur'an, that is his behavior character, really, even behind closed door. So yes, Aisha exposed Muhammad Wasallam to be as good behind closed door as good as he is in the public eyes right so this one is his own um, accusation or you know his own he, he imposed what he believed my reply okay so you made several claim about why it is evil which is the main thing because he claimed despite all the good thing that we see it is still evil because of that three or four points so, number one, it was evil because she was not mentally prepared, prepared for marriage. Oops, sorry. So, do you have any evidence to back this claim? Is it based on assumption that because of her age, she is not mentally prepared? So, is it purely because you assume oh, at that age must be not prepared? Is it, is it based on that assumption? Now, to be clear, we are talking about a specific person in a specific time in a specific culture she lives in a time and culture where such marriage is a norm i'm not saying that automatically makes it okay but i'm addressing your claim which is about mentally prepared right so we are talking about specific marriage now not about a general about general age we are talking about that specific girl in that specific marriage right so it that happened in that specific culture and in that specific time so if you want to say it is evil she's not mentally prepared based on what because yes now if you go to a girl that age that assumption most probably believe most probably be correct because the norm is different the norm no one she know no one get married at that age so suddenly she is being proposed for marriage he she is definitely not mentally prepared because no one at her age that she know get married back then it's different right because she knows other girls also got married so is it true the assumption right second uh, you know, um, the life expectancy, I mean, uh, she expect to go to school, she expect etc, 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 right? That's now. Back then, you know, what did she expect? So, so, if you want to impose that claim that she is not mentally prepared, you have to have an evidence to back that claim up. Aisha herself, because we know about this marriage mostly from Aisha herself, did she indicate anything to imply that she is not mentally prepared for the marriage 
or even the story that she tell about you know when she was very young in that marriage indicate that you know what what does it indicate you can feel free to go and take a look for yourself and see whether your claim has any validity in it right or it's purely your assumption based on now which is meaning that you are not really critically addressing the marriage can you pinpoint or can you point out at any evidence that show that she is not mentally prepared okay so that's number one she herself tells about her marriage life and you can read directly what she said does any of her story indicate that she is not mentally prepared so that's my question just now right from all the story be it from uh, when um, Prophet Muhammad bring her to see the, the festive or they are racing you know uh, running etc so those are part in you you can see many aspect of the marriage life from her story and is there any any where any of the episode that shows or imply or hint of any case of mentally not prepared second her consent is the most important thing which she couldn't give at the time because of her age so is this based on certain rule of age of consent or something or is it based on a certain rule about marriage where it specifies the age for a person to consent a marriage i'm just trying to understand the basis of the claim that you made right because on this one i cannot comment any further because i do not know where this person comes from does he see things from a religious perspective for example if a christian see that moral ethics is dictated by god if you are in that category the discussion will be okay so we agree that morality is objective based on god so let's take a look at what god tells us right you can open your bible see what is the age of consent we can see the quran and the hadith see what is the age of consent right but if you say no 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 we shouldn't bring religious to this we just follow the law of the us or law of i don't know what law of pakistan law of china i don't know i'm not sure so i i'm i'm trying to understand the basis because when you say consent because that tied up to other concept right because what some people from a certain culture in that culture that if you see actually what happened when she was proposed to the marriage right she didn't indicate any rejection etc right so from that culture can they see that it, you know there's no problem with consent here right so yeah but you have you see it is a problem so it must be from a different paradigm and perspective so is it religion is it certain country what is it right if you establish that we can discuss further now so you see also her parents agreed to the marriage but what about her so my question is did she indicate in any shape way or form that she do not want to be in that marriage right because if there's indication of that we can discuss meaning she said no 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 i don't want this but some somehow she is being forced then that we can say wait, wait, wait. you know truly from islamic perspective as well no she she didn't want this why are you forcing her but if there's no indication of that from her herself what are you talking about her consent is nothing and the letter Aisha exposed Muhammad is the way no other could expose him. So I mentioned my comment about this. What did Aisha expose Muhammad for? She did speak about her marriage life in so many hadiths that we Muslim know how to be a good husband in our marriage. Also, about the use of the word that used 
uh, on the prophet so you know the the p word etc do you realize the age of all the other wives of the prophet so that's one question because i think some people that criticize or pick pinpoint this 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 issue do not even realize the age of the other wives right but if you realize that what you what how would you you know see this because normally anyway that's my question because most people they only want know oh this marriage uh, okay many people know there are many wives but then they only take they are focused on onto one specific wife why because they want to attack maybe if that is the case then if that is the case then that shows your intention right but if you are honest and objective if you see oh all of the wives the age is like this this one is young you your your accusation would be different actually right anyway do you realize the age of his wife who is anyway do you realize the age of his first wife that he cherished for the long time before her death right with Khadija do you know the age and that is the basically the longest marriage that uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have right so if you know that fact would you still accuse the same accusation taking all of those information is it still logical to accuse or the accusation that people throw at him so i end with that if you know all of the information would you still make the same accusation right so i leave it at that thank you for watching see you next time